you may have heard Christmas described as the time of year when the whole world breathes a great sigh of belief. If that's true, then perhaps now, just into the new year, is the time when we uh, could say the whole world breathes a great sigh of relief. The festivities are over. Whatever happened to your turkey, the presents you received, the presents you gave, or whatever the family tensions, it's all over and we've survived. Unless, that is, you now have the self-inflicted stress of trying to live out a punishing New Year resolution. Apparently, research into these resolutions has revealed that 30% are broken within just the first week. And if you're still sticking to yours by the end of January, you're in the minority. They don't seem to last long. In the Gospel reading today, the Magi heard a message from God. They set out in response to that message and they journeyed to see the newborn king. And the whole experience changed them for more than just a few days. They returned home by another way, on a different road, and I'm sure in a different spirit. For all of us, our own journeying continues into a new year, and new things will happen to us. We will almost certainly be different people by the end of 2022. I can't prescribe an instant guarantee for ease or success in any of your possible resolutions for 2022, or what on earth will happen regarding the pandemic and other issues we face. But if each, each of us should at least try to manage the changes we face in good faith. And a really simple step to journeying in good faith is to assume that our own plans will be disrupted at some point, not just by circumstances, but by God himself. That's not to say your new year resolution is bound to fail. It's just that it might not lead you where you first thought. Remember, God said through the prophet Isaiah, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That means that whatever happens, and whatever I resolve to do and be in 2022, God will probably have a better, higher plan, and I need to be open to that. Often talk to PCCs looking for a new incumbent or a kind of multi-parish benefices looking to reimagine ministry and, and asking questions about how they might do these things. And very, very often, in fact, probably always, the talk inevitably comes down to the need for change. As we explore that in more depth, what often emerges is a real and genuine desire for change. Everyone sees the need for it. But also what emerges is the desire to make that change as long as nothing has to be different. One of the things that drives me nuts in my occasional visits to the gym is seeing people, and I have to admit it's usually teenage boys, uh, sitting in the gym equipment, fiddling away uh, with their thumbs on their mobile phone uh, whilst doing nothing. These people, I presume, they want to get fit or strong, uh, and yet they want to do it without having to exercise. And I'm not sure that's possible. You can't change without changing. There will almost certainly for all of us come a moment in 2022 and quite possibly several moments when God will come alongside you and prompt you to do something different. It may be something that comes so naturally to you you barely notice or it might be quite a big change of direction. I suspect the Magi had every intention of returning to their country on the same road they used to travel from it. Suddenly having to go back a different way would have meant a new plan and possibly a longer, more dangerous and more uncertain journey. But that's the route they chose. 2022 might present similar challenges for you, or it may be all plain sailing. The key to being prepared to change is being sure that the call to do so is from God and to accept that reality to understand that we are listening for that voice and we must obey and respond when we hear it. Someone famous once said that there are two reasons for everything we do, the good reason and the real reason. The good reason is the one we tell everyone and we hear a lot of examples in the media when people are trying to explain away their behaviour. The real reason is just that and often left unsaid. 
There's a great bit of advice in chapter five of Acts when Gamaliel, one of the Pharisees, suggests caution when the crowd want to stone the apostles. He says, if this plan or this undertaking is of human origin, it will fail. But if it's of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. In that case, you may even find yourselves fighting against God. In other words, you need to keep in mind where this call to journey differently comes from, the reality of God's call on all our lives, however challenging that, that may appear. If we don't, we may find ourselves resisting God himself. I read recently, um, slightly mad, but some years ago, an Oxford University magazine reported that Worcester, like most colleges, does not admit dogs. The dean's dog, Flint, has thus officially been declared a cat by the governing body. We hear all these stories today, people flying in the face of what they know must uh, be, uh, just is not the truth, flying in the face of the facts of what everyone else accepts as true. Of course, it doesn't really matter if you want to pretend that a dog is actually a cat, but there are plenty of times when we make decisions based on what we want to hear, as opposed to accepting the reality of what God has said. Apparently, at any given time, 4% of motorists on the road are lost. No idea how they work that out. But here are people who know where they want to go, but don't actually know uh, where they're going. Jesus said in Luke chapter 19, the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost. That saving meant pointing us in the right direction, the way to salvation. From Isaiah chapter 30, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, the Magi returned to their country by another route. The Magi knew exactly the way by which God had told them to travel. Let's make sure we too are listening to the right voice and adjusting our plans accordingly. When the Magi left Jesus, Mary and Joseph had another journey to make, this time to Egypt. They were always moving on, guided by God, accepting change. They kept themselves on track. They kept their faith alive through their openness to God, their desire and readiness to hear and follow. And the whole world was blessed through their faith. May we all be inspired to follow the example of the Magi, of Mary and Joseph through this new year. I'd be able to rejoice together when we gather at the end of it.